Today, we're going to look at an easy way to find information on how industrial and federal facilities are managing chemicals and what they're doing to reduce pollution using data from EPA's Toxics Release Inventory, or TRI. TRI data and information can empower communities, companies, and others to make more informed decisions that impact public health and the environment. Let's start on the TRI program homepage at www.epa.gov TRI. There are several ways to access TRI data, but the easiest is through this search feature at the bottom of the page. There are multiple location-based search options, as well as an option to find a facility by name. If you want to know what nearby facilities reported chemical releases, click this green View Current Location button. For now, I'm going to use the address search to look up Houston, Texas. The results start with a map showing all 89 TRI facilities within 10 miles of the center of Houston. I can change the distance here on the left if I want to look at a smaller or larger area. Each of these purple dots represents the location of a TRI facility. If I move the mouse over a dot, I'll see the facility's name, address, and industry sector. In the lower left corner, I can choose to add other EPA-regulated facilities to the map. By default, the size and color of each dot represent the quantity of total chemical releases from that facility. So, the larger the dot and the darker the color, the more pounds of TRI chemicals the facility released. And in our view, here is the largest dot. If I want, I can change the dot color to represent industry sector, and I can change the dot size to represent potential risk score. And we'll talk about risk score in a few minutes. Let's look at a slightly different version of this map in the demographic profile section. So this map is going to tell us about certain characteristics of the population living near these TRI facilities in Houston. One demographic indicator will display on the map at a time. I'm going to choose low income from the list of options, wait for the map to update, and then I'm going to scroll down and zoom in on this area here. The color coding tells us that near the facility with the highest releases, the population is more than 52% low income. And this area is in the 70th to 80th percentile nationally, which means that the percentage of low income people here is higher than it is where 70 to 80% of the US population lives. When I switch the demographic indicator to people of color, for example, we see that the population around that largest dot is more than 72% people of color. Note that clicking on any one of these indicator labels gives you an explanation of that label. Now let's go back and talk about potential risk score. On this map and the first map we looked at, I can choose to have the dot size represent relative potential risk score. Now these scores account for not just the quantity of the chemical, but also its toxicity and potential for human exposure. These scores can be compared to other risk screening scores to help determine the relative potential risk posed by facilities, chemicals, industry sectors, or geographic areas. The scores can help communities identify and prioritize potential concerns. Now notice how when I select potential risk score, a different facility dot becomes the largest on the map. Let's move on to the facility summary section. Here, I get a print-friendly summary of the 89 facilities within 10 miles of Houston. And I will scroll down here to show you the charts that are included in the report. 
So it's a very nice visual summary of the data for this area. Now the middle tab shows me a chart of the top 10 facilities in the Houston area based on total releases. And I can see this by uh, media type, air, water, land, or offsite transfers, and by chemical. And then if I scroll down farther, I can view this by uh, potential risk score as well. The final tab in this section is the facility comparison table. And here I get basic TRI data for each of the facilities that I can compare and I also get links to more information about them in EPA's EJ screen tool. And this table can be sorted um, by clicking on the different column headings depending on what you're interested in. For the rest of this video, we're going to continue to look at combined data for these 89 facilities. But if you're interested in a specific facility, there are two ways to narrow your search results you can click on the facility dot on that initial map screen we saw, or you can choose um, the facility from this table by clicking on its name. Now let's jump down to the potential risk section of the results. So I alluded to earlier that uh, pounds of chemicals released isn't the most useful metric if you're interested in identifying potential health risks. So this section, of the results allows me to see the quantity of pounds released and the potential risk score side by side. This graph on the left shows that of all the chemical releases reported to TRI by these 89 facilities, zinc and zinc compounds were released in the largest quantity. But if we also account for the toxicity of the chemicals and the likelihood that nearby populations could be exposed, we see that the potential risk from chromium and chromium compounds is much greater. Under the second tab, we can look at the change in risk screening score over time. And in Houston, the greatest potential risk based on TRI reporting comes from air releases, those light blue bars, although that potential risk has declined over the past few years. Now, the search results also include information about facilities' waste management practices, um, their pollution prevention activities, potential health effects of the chemicals they're releasing, and their compliance and enforcement history. As you look through the search results, note that you can download a spreadsheet version of the data or print a summary report. You can get more information about the results by clicking on this More Info button or you can get general help up here at the top by clicking the how to search link. Some of the sections also have a definitions button near the top to explain the TRI terms being used. That's it for today's video. Remember, you can find more tools for accessing and analyzing TRI data on the TRI Data and Tools webpage.